Holy mother. It's a new day and a new disaster on the farm. I have shorts on. Good day. How's it going, eh? That's my impersonation of a Canadian. So we're back to field work today. We've had a little hiatus over the uh, last la latter part of last week, over the weekend. And uh, today is Thursday, May 21st. Yesterday was the first day we had over 20 degrees Celsius on May 20th of 2020. A lot of 20s, but we're quite happy about it. As you notice, I'm in a t-shirt uh, today and uh, we just started field work again. We've been doing lots of kind of odds and sods, shipping grain and uh, soybeans and, and uh, corn. So right now we're just trying to get some ground ready for the edible beans across the road. So Jess is running the joker across the corn stalks there. Uh, Jack's gonna spread some fertilizer in the wagon there, some urea. Uh, for some edible beans over at our farm by Hensel. I'm gonna help him get set up with that and then I'm gonna go out and plant soybeans uh, and get back at soybean planting. Uh, we got 80 acres planted there last Wednesday and then they got wet and we kind of been out of the field since then. Uh, we got uh, an inch of rain, 30 mils. I guess it's a little bit more than an inch, an inch and a quarter. And we were pretty fortunate, uh, not too far away from us to the south, they got like two inches. And I saw some horrific uh, images on social media in Michigan there where some uh, actually levees and dams let go uh, from rain. So we've been very fortunate. Uh, we easily took that inch of rain and we're allowed, we're not allowed, but we can get back in the fields here uh, after two days. So we're pretty fortunate that way. I do have to say, I watched Brian's farming videos and uh, probably, I don't know, if you don't watch him, you should look. But he did a video last night I watched of their flood damage. They farm a lot of river bottom land and, oh, disheartening to say the least, how much water was sitting on their fields of the planted crops. So, as I said, we're lucky. So we're back to using that fertilizer spreader that uh, I got this spring and it's come in really, really handy. We've used it a lot and quite happy that we spent the money to get it. Uh, so we got to get it full of urea which is just straight nitrogen, 48, or sorry, 46% nitrogen. So Jack's gonna spread that, as I said, on some edible bean ground. We're gonna plant the black beans uh, and we have to do the calibration process for it. But first things I gotta do is get the auger set up to the wagon and then get it filled up and get it all set up so Jack can go spread and I can go plant soybeans. Auger is set up. I'm just gonna back the tractor and spreader underneath, get it filled up, grab a sample of fertilizer, do the shaky shaky test that I showed in another video. Uh, get all the parameters for spreading and plug it into the controller and Jack will be on his merry way. <laughs>
you're seed. almost done. Oh, you're almost out of seed. I went and saw your canola. Yeah? Yeah. It's beautiful. It'll be prettier and a little bit more when it gets more flowers. Like another week? Uh, with a few days. Coming, I'm we're running out of seed, are No. Well, just short. Clutches? This is your camera, by the way. I gathered that. <laughs> These are your people. <laughs> Mine is here. Dare I say I'm hot? It's warm. <laughs> I think I might have to put some shorts under these beautiful bibs. It's gonna get hotter. Well, after I grabbed a bite to eat, I forgot to grab my camera. Sandy was gracious enough to bring it out uh, to me right when I was running out of seed. So I planted 40 acres, got the drill uh, really low, and I'm gonna put a different variety in so we can do a comparison uh, between two uh, different bean varieties. So we're just gonna load up with a pro box of that variety and head back and try to get that field planted and see how much more seed we're going to need to finish it but it's going to be close. Loaded up, ready to go. We got about 2,000 pounds in the cedar, so that would be not quite 30 acres. We'll see if we can get squeezed out of her, but yeah, probably about 25. Uh, yeah, we get that field done. We'll get this cedar cleaned out tonight, switch it over to IP beans, and start planting them tomorrow. And hopefully, I can get the last couple of tanks to spray off tonight I was spraying our winter wheat for weeds I uh, we just have enough dandelions and stuff so need to get that cleaned up so no shortage of jobs to do well we're down to the last few seeds in the tank here and Sandy's gonna grab some bags of beans to keep us going that uh, our wonderful seed person K uh, brought out to us so I'm hoping to make it to the end here once I get to the end I'll stop and we'll put some bags in I think uh, we got about uh, five acres uh, six acres left so we'll put like ten bags in and we should be good Yeah, she was saying Just these. toss those two off to the side and then we'll do it. The other one's a nine, nine threes or something. I think I only need 10 bags and then we'll just. Holy mother!
Take a bag with them. Why don't you just stick? Do you want me to just go with you? Yeah. Hi, peace. Corn should be lovely to see. Should be. Well, back in the yard. And now we gotta get the air seeder cleaned out for tomorrow. Uh, unless I get Rammy, which I think you who watch my videos know I tend to get Rammy every once in a while. But we gotta suck out uh, what's left inside of the tank and then blow off all the kind of loose seed that's around to make sure it's clean and uh, doesn't have contamination. Kind of like up here on the platform. It's really, sun is so bright today. Yeah, so we gotta blow this kind of off in case there's little beans sitting on here. And kind of, you can see there's some beans just in different spots. So we'll get the air gun off out and blow that off and just clean her up so she's good to fill for tomorrow. Well, it's Friday, it's a new day and a new disaster on the farm. These two pieces should be on my sprayer. But in an effort to try to be super efficient last night, I decided to clean out my sprayer after finishing up spraying the wheat last night uh, so I can get uh, ready to spray some pre-emergent herbicides for our IP soybeans. I backed into a bucket by the sheep barn where I kind of clean up my sprayer and I broke the pipe and I saw stuff hanging and I'm like oh that's not good so Sandy's gonna have to go for a bit of a drive today to get some parts for me but as you can see up here that should be there god dang birds nesting everywhere I blame your barn <laughs> Anyways, uh, so Sandy's going to run and get the part for me. I'll have to tear apart this afternoon and get that fixed. And go from there. Okay, that's better. Full memory card. Not good. So, I got a fresh one and we're good to go again. Anyways, about the sprayer. Sandy's going to go get the pipe for me. It's about an hour and a half away. Which for some might not seem long, but for us that's... Bit of a drive, so she's gonna grab that. I'll get it fixed up after she gets back and probably get her to start planting some soybeans. I'm gonna start now on the farm here beside us and we'll go from there. Well, as we continue our fantastic Friday, because uh, it's Friday, it's beautiful outside, I have shorts on, which is another fantastic thing. And our corn's coming up. I haven't really gone out to see how well it's coming up, but uh, the field beside me here, the other side of these trees, is coming up. I can see it kind of through the tree line. So that is a good sign. And uh, the beans are going in. I got the population set pretty good. Uh, in 15 inch rows, we like to plant around 120, or sorry, 175,000 seeds per acre. Uh, we're planting a little bit higher with this stuff. Uh, in no-till, I tend to go it's about 185, uh, 185,000 seeds per acre. I just find uh, it helps with the push a little bit to come out of the soil. But conditions are good, soil temperatures are awesome, and we're just gonna keep planting away here. This is, uh, as I said, on the home farm. There's a sheep barn over my corner. Uh, we'll see what these beans do. If they've been, uh, uh, the corn stalks have been worked with the joker, and we also applied uh, some sheep manure on this to see what it does with soybeans. So, it'll be an interesting experiment. An update on our clutches for our air seeder uh, that Jack and I wired in. I, we didn't really talk too in depth about it, but basically it's a lot like the corn planter, except that what it does here is it shuts off half the drill. Uh, so it's two sections, so we have one and two. And basically what happens is when we get into an area that's been already planted, if 
a, a section can be shut off, it, the clutch will shut off automatically uh, through our egg leader system. It was kind of a a fabricated way to do it. It's not to, not really the simplest way, but it works kind of nice. The one thing I did realize when I was using it yesterday is that it's probably best not to use them when we're playing the headlands because we like to kind of over plan, make sure we get corners. And sometimes they might not turn on fast enough just the way we are kind of stop and start on a headland. So what I did there was uh, basically just uh, uh, not use and plant this headland here on the home farm today. And once we get going up and down, uh, we turn them on automatically. So you might've heard of the monitor beeping over here. This is where I would keep track of my population on my uh, drill for the seed. Uh, it's supposed to run the clutches, I can do it manually, but the thing is the egg leader takes over and it thinks it's planting, but the egg leader say, no, you shouldn't plant. So it beeps at me to say, there's no seed coming out. But that's about it. So if it gets really annoying, we can just kind of trick the display on the John Deere here to say it's off and it's not a big deal. So pretty happy with how it's working. So these boxes down here are basically the row units that are planting. It's kind of giving me an idea of population up here and just can scan through the different rows to see how it's going. We have a uh, load cells on the drill. It keeps track of the weight so I know if we're empty and then we can calibrate it for the right population. We do plant in pounds per acre, but we know how many seeds per pound there are. So it's not too bad that way. And then as I said, the egg leader here is controlling the uh, clutches and you can kind of see the split lines here. So that's one half and that's the other half. So it's all working pretty good. It's pretty simple once you get it running. And uh, it's kind of an update. See the drill behind me. It's, uh, I'm hoping for a big day today, whether we get a whole bunch of small fields done and leave tomorrow for a big day, uh, but we got basically 200 acres to plant. Well, not quite 200, but 170. Don't think I can do it in a day because we have a couple small fields and a big move, but we'll be done soybeans tomorrow, which will be nice because we can get this tractor off the air seeder, put it on the joker, get the tractor on the joker off onto my planter, and I can actually maybe start planting some edibles. We'll see how it goes. Forecast is kind of catchy. One day, it, one day it shows rain coming. The other day it shows nothing. So don't know. Just gonna, just gonna wing it. 30 acres of IP beans planted. So just gonna fill it up. Head down the road. Do another 32 acres. That'll be all the small fields out of the way, and then we'll head to the big one probably later today or tomorrow. But uh, yeah, time to get filled up. Okay, you can see the canola is nice and yellow, which is great. Uh, I'll update you on that in a little while. Uh, and we're done the last little small no-till field here. So we'll go home, fuel up, fill up with seed, go over uh, to our farm over by Hensel and start planting some beans there. And I think everything's going fairly well. Got kicked off the seat by the other lady in my life. So I gotta go home, grab the seed wagon and the conveyor, bring it here to the shed that we got, that we can use. And it's got a welder plug in it so we can plug the conveyor in to this shed. And uh, I can get Sandy filled up. So by the time I get back here, she probably could use seeds, so. And then I'll get to fixing my sprayer and hopefully the wind dies down a little bit and I can get uh, some of this stuff sprayed. Got the train ready to go. So we'll head out and get this seed to Sandy. 
for the bumpy ride down the crappy Hansel Road. So it's near the end of the day uh, and we're here fixing the sprayer finally. Had to help Sandy with some issues with the air seeder. There's a little soybean uh, stock that was plugging the one hole that meters seed out so it was causing it not to plant and to get in there you got to be a contortionist and I'm old and not flexible and uh, it's not a fun job at all. So uh, we got it fixed, got her going again, got her filled up with seed. I took the seed tender and the wagon there like you saw. And now I just got to get this fixed. I got to get a little bit of threaded pipe out of that area there. Put the new one on, take these off and put it on the new pipe. And we'll go from there. Oh, I'm dirty. Anyways, gotta get our special blue gunk on that uh, keeps things sealed up. Okay, we got the end cap on. Now we just gotta figure out how to get the inside threads it so uh, I'm gonna contemplate that one for a little bit got it all back together it wasn't fun I had to use a hacksaw blade to kind of cut the piece out right here so I got the new pipe on and nozzle bodies on just gonna put some water through the system to make sure that everything works and uh, if it does Load up a batch of IP herbicide chemical and we'll uh, spray 60, 66 acres, I guess, hopefully, yet tonight. And then call the night and get going first thing in the morning again, hopefully. Oh, I just can't believe how dirty I get. The dust, dust I guess is good. For what we're trying to do I haven't heard from Sandy at all which is a, a good sign so anyways water test spray <laughs> 